Hey guys, Brent Hall, Wednesday design video. I'm gonna talk about columns and porches today, even on high-end houses. I was driving home from our job in Highland Park and drove by these houses like, oh my gosh, even on three million, four million, five million dollar houses and up, they don't know how to do this. It's the lost art of building, come join me. I see this house and this is a you know three four million dollar house and even they screwed it up it doesn't look right okay what what's wrong with it okay why, why isn't it working if you've been watching these videos you know that I, I go about the columns and I talk about this here they are trying to do something traditional they're trying to do something Palladian but it's the little details that they're getting that are wrong now look here's the ICA sheet that I use quite a bit this is the ionic order but there's a few things that you should notice is that one, the neck of the column always lines up with the beam above it. They haven't done that. There is a relationship and a change in purpose for these moldings. You have an architrave, you have a freeze, sometimes it's pulvinated, and then you have this cornice. Now, when we look at that and then we go here, we realize that the parts and pieces are missing, okay? First, the column is a straight tube, okay? Straight tube, straight tube. Two, the proportion of this window and the way this is organized, in my mind, is kind of odd because that's the size of the door and then all of a sudden the bottom of the window, which isn't as big as the door, is the same height as, the, as that column. And so if you just looked at it this way, you might say, oh, it's a really big window. But then when you realize that the window is the same size as the door, or it's organized that way, it looks odd. So it's kind of throwing you off. And then we've talked about it in my pediment videos. They clearly didn't know how to design a pediment. And so it's just all the parts and pieces are messed up. And so, we're gonna to try, to, try to fix this today. First thing I do is columns need emphasis. What that is, it's a natural movement in the, in the column, and when you have these straight tubes, they are lifeless, okay? Two, their capital right there, okay, there's the neck of the column, and it's not lined up with the beam. So the organization, of the structural organization of this makes this appear like it's really pressing down on this column. And what happens is, is that if your column capital, if, if this beam, which is that their beam, that beam that they're trying to carry is in line with the neck of the column, it looks like it visually can carry it. If it's out here, then it looks like, you know, this could break in here right? Because all this forces out on a very weak element. And so moving that piece in would have helped this composition look like it's stronger. And then, you know, just the, the size of the window and everything else. But look what's happened here. They've got a cornice out there, but that cornice should wrap onto this piece, right? And wrap around and then be part of the pediment above. And just because they don't know how those parts and pieces go together, it looks silly. Just wanted to do a quick fix on this thing and just show you what I would do. One, I would you know, be pulling this column out, okay? And then all the parts and pieces that they're missing. So if we look back at this thing, right? The architrave, okay? And there's a, re a proportional relationship between all of these parts and the overall D. So that's what, that's what these numbers out here are. So, you know, D, 5 eighths of the D is the architect, 6 eighths is the freeze, 7 eighths is the cornice. And so what we need to do is we need a clear, so here's the beam of our column coming through here, okay? There's your capital going out, should come back in, should be an architrave that goes across, should be a, a flat area, and, I, and I've called that flat area a pause because that architrave can be kind of busy here, right, going around. We need, a, we need a visual pause before we go up into the bed mold with the corona and the cymation, okay? So there is a build out here that takes place, okay, that would kick these moldings out further. But if I reorganize this so it made sense, all of a sudden this would look a lot better. I would most likely change the size of that window to something more charming, something that doesn't compete with the door. I would fix this up here, right, same thing, so that this cornice comes around and it's actually up here coming around. And then your pediment, right, would have would have been tied into that that cornice. And if you've watched my pediment videos, you'll you'll see the difference. But what I want to encourage you is that even 
on million dollar houses, even when they have high end architects, they still aren't getting these parts and pieces right. And it's a small, subtle thing, but if they understood and they knew it, our houses would look more beautiful. Here's another house. What's wrong with this? Okay, we got a straight tube. We've got a, a column capital that they've actually built out this beam, okay? They built out that beam so that it would match the height or the, the, the size of their capital up here, okay? Clearly, they don't understand that this neck, okay, needs to line up with, after it gets over the capital, everything's set back. We don't build that out, okay? This beam should have run straight across, okay? Without being built out, it would look better. Second, the organization of this entablature running across here and the size of this molding, to me, this molding looks too small. I would have, you know, it closer to about half the size of this and build this up with a stronger keystone that went right up into, right up into, uh, and supports that, that piece above. But this could be bolder and stronger, but they clearly, you know, they might have looked at an old book and, and didn't realize what they're seeing. But on a house that's as elevated as this, this column and entablature on this very prominent entry is in my opinion, ruined uh, or, or cheapened a great deal because they clearly don't understand how the parts and pieces go together. The emphasis on the columns, which I was talking about, is basically the, a third of the way up, okay, which is, and they've got this broken into three parts. So a third of the way up, this is, you know, straight, just like they've got it. What happens here is from this point to this point, your column slowly tapers down, okay? So I'm probably in here, slowly tapering down. And what that does is, it, is that gives your column, okay, more like something that has movement and strength and, and it's more organic. It, it has a base that's stronger and it moves up and it tapers. Now, one of the reasons they did that, taper the columns, is because when straight tubes or columns are together, there's an optical illusion that can actually make it look thinner than it actually is. But I would have had a, a probably an attic base here instead of just a single torus so that we get a little life and a little movement there. Beef up this molding a little bit. Maybe it has a back band on it as it runs into that keystone. But this current one just seems a little bit small and kind of not able to handle or carry this, this, this important structure. And so by you know building up the keystone so that it visually kind of carries the roof above, there's you know tons of historic precedent to look at. You know I'm always saying learn from the past, but applying those rules to these houses and doing these quick fix even on million dollar houses understanding these rules is a big thing and you know it's one of those things if you want to be a master builder you got to understand these building things hopefully that helps out <laughs>